They might seem like magic to the less informed. They light up the sky when our spirits are down. They dazzle us on special occasions and light our hearts just as well. Whether it's the 4th of July or the Chinese New Year, fireworks are the best finale of any festivity. Now that you're here, let's find out how it all comes together. These mind-blowing spectacles in the sky. It all starts with selecting the right chemicals in the right quantities. That's where the quest for raw materials comes in. Fireworks are about chemistry, engineering, and artistry. Only the finest chemicals will do. What manufacturer would want their product to explode even before it gets to the sky? Most modern fireworks usually start up as paper mache or heavy paper shell. This shell can also be made of plastic, and it usually has a number of compartments separated by cardboard. Think of it like an office space with cubicles to separate the workers. At the base of the shell, the workers place a small compartment containing black powder. This is the initial explosion that sends the fireworks tearing into the sky. Usually this compartment is crafted with plastic or heavy paper. Black powder, also known as gunpowder, is our secret sauce for propelling and exploding. Think of it as the caffeine in your coffee. It gets things going! Then we have chemicals for colors. Different metal salts produce different hues. Strontium gives us red, barium brings green, and copper turns things blue. It's like mixing paints, but with more boom. We also need binding agents, like dextrin to hold everything together. After all, nobody wants their fireworks falling apart mid-flight, right? Fuel and oxidizers, such as charcoal and potassium nitrate, Ensure the party keeps going, while special effects ingredients like aluminum or magnesium add extra bright flashes or sparkles. Because why settle for a regular explosion when you can have a dazzling one? In modern fireworks, manufacturers in America and Europe prefer to mix the colors with black powder inside a cylindrical compartment. First, the company prepares the stars from ingredients sourced from chemical supply companies and stored in barrels. When mixing, these chemicals are scooped out, weighed, and sifted twice through brass screens to eliminate any lumps. Brass is used because it won't produce any sparks. Remember, the golden rule is safety first. We want fireworks, not fire hazards. Now that the chemicals have been scooped, weighed, and sifted, what are we going to do with them? How does this mass of chemicals turn into that light show you see in the skies? That's where the next step comes in. The sifted powders are then placed on a large sheet of paper and mixed by hand. A rotating drum or a stationary container with rotating panels may also be used. However, we must be careful not to have any heat through friction. Something like that would be a recipe for disaster indeed. After this, the mixed powder is placed in barrels and taken to the cutting room. Water is mixed with a dry mixture to form a soft dough. This dough is scooped into large paper-lined wooden molds shaped like loaves of bread. A wooden mallet is used to pack the dough firmly into the mold. It's much safer to work with wet dough than dry powder. Remember kids, wet dough is like Play-Doh, dry powder is like dynamite. The massive loaves of dough are unmolded onto the workbench covered with heavy cardboard sprinkled with black powder. The dough is cut in one direction to form slices, then cut in the other direction to form dice. Since the dough is wet, the black powder adheres to the dice, helping them burn once the firework is ignited. Paper-covered screens are used to dry the dice for the next step. The dry dice now stars, are moved to the packing room and placed into cardboard containers. Whether it's a gigantic dragon we want to see at the end, or Kung Fu Panda himself, the next part of the process is the same. A hollow cardboard tube is placed in the center of a cylindrical container, and the stars are carefully poured around it. Once the container is packed to the brim with stars, black powder is poured inside the hollow tube, which is then removed. The powder fills up the spaces between the stars, causing them to ignite and scatter later. While we're at it, quick question. Would you prefer your stars to create hearts, smiley faces, or just good old-fashioned explosions? The best answer will earn a shout-out from us. 
While you type your answers in the comments, we'll move on to the next step of the process, which is adding the finishing touches. A paper cap is placed on the container, which is now called a brake. A heavy string is wrapped around the brake in a process known as spiking. The string is cut and tied when the brake is completely covered. A short, slow-burning fuse known as the time fuse is inserted into the brake, which is then wrapped in heavy paper. The fuse is probably the key element in all this, because that's what would cause the brake to explode when it's launched. The wrap brakes are transferred to the pasting room to be covered in heavy paste-soaked paper, then allowed to dry for about two days. Interestingly, some brakes are filled with flash powder instead of stars and black powder, and the results are far more spectacular. So what makes this alternate process so effective? First, when brakes' small explosive components are filled with flash powder, they are known as salutes. Flash powder, a highly explosive mixture, is prepared the same way as the chemicals used to make stars, the colorful glowing parts of fireworks. Once the mixture is ready, it's poured into thicker cardboard containers than regular brakes. This thicker container causes more pressure to build up before the salute explodes, resulting in much louder booms. Think of it as the fireworks way of saying, look at me. These salutes are also spiked and pasted like other brakes, ensuring they don't fizzle out like a bad joke. After the salutes dry, because nobody likes a soggy firework, they are taken to the finishing room to be assembled into complete firework shells. A simple shell consists of a small compartment of black powder and a single brake. The design of these shells varies by region. Asian shells typically contain only one brake due to their spherical shape, which produces a single burst of color and sound. It's like the firework equivalent of a minimalist. One big bang and it's done. In contrast, American and European shells are cylindrical, allowing multiple brakes to be stacked together. This design enables the shell to produce multiple bursts of different colors and effects when it explodes, creating a more complex and visually stunning display. Why settle for one burst when you can have a grand finale to truly honor the independence of the greatest country in the world? Watch out for the Europeans in the comments who might attack me for claiming America is number one. The funniest attack will earn a subscription to your channel from us, so go for it, you guys. But make sure you're subscribed first or it doesn't count. Moving on, multi-brake shells consist of a black powder compartment combined with three or four colored brakes and a salute. Large shells may contain as many as 10 brakes. Fun fact, one gigantic shell was even made with 22 brakes. Pretty incredible, right? The shell is assembled by stacking all the various components together, attaching a long, fast-burning fuse known as the starting fuse, and finally wrapping the entire thing in heavy paper. The assembled package is tied together with string, labeled, and stored. Note that they have to be checked for quality, because what's worse, a firework that doesn't explode or one that explodes too soon. If you ruin New Year's Eve for someone like that, they might spend the rest of their lives trying to hunt you down. Just kidding. Where am I? Anyway, the last step is to launch the fireworks. The design to be formed is sketched on graph paper and sent to the carpenters. If a set piece is to be used, they'll meticulously build a wooden frame with thin wooden slats in the shape of the design. If the company chooses to use music to accompany the fireworks, the timing of the firework display will be planned to match the tempo of the music accurately. Mortars to launch the shells are placed in their proper places. Holes are dug in the ground or in steel drums filled with sand for large shells, while smaller mortars are placed in wooden racks. The proper shell is loaded in place for each mortar. The crew then assembles the wooden frames for the set pieces and attaches lances to the slats, connecting the fuses to the lances. The lances and mortars are lit at the proper times when the display is initiated, either with long hand-held flares or with electrical wires attached to a central switchboard. It's crucial to destroy any unexploded duds after the show safely. Remember the dazzling fireworks show earlier in the video? 
That's actually a world record holder. In January this year, the Sheikh Zayed Festival at Abu Dhabi's Al Wathba area celebrated the New Year 2024 with a number of fireworks shows that broke four Guinness World Records, including a combination of fireworks display and a drone show that lasted 60 minutes. Nowadays, to make it even more spectacular, the fireworks show is usually accompanied by New Age artistic dance in the sky, drone shows. Have you ever marveled at those stunning drone light shows that paint the sky with moving lights and intricate patterns? It's one big choreographed dance, but in the sky and ten times cooler. But how is it executed to perfection every time? Find out how a live drone show is done next.